The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. B here with the fabulous Tracy Thompson. Super excited to be back on with her as always. And today we are going to do a little mindset work, something mm. new, I think that we haven't covered with Cleaning Nation, which is going to be the owner operator mindset in the business versus the shareholder mindset in your mm. cleaning company. So Tracy, I will let you take it away and tell us, I guess, first, like, what the owner operator looks like, feels like for an owner. Yes. Well, uh, welcome clean nation. Uh, you are all out there. You own a cleaning company. You're likely identifying yourself as an owner operator. What does that mean? That means that you are working in the business and on the business at different levels. Maybe you're just starting and you're everything. You're that go-to person for everything. Maybe you're even still cleaning owner operator, right? Or you could be at the level of the stage with your business growth where you're out of cleaning, but you're still working in the business. You may still be handling scheduling. That's a big one. You could be um, out there running supplies to people and putting out fires out in the field, you know, things like that. So owner operator just means that you're still very involved inside the business. Okay. So I'm sure most of you fall into that category where you go, yep, that's me. I'm still trying to grow the business um, from the inside, from the inside out. And totally understandable. That's, that's where most people start is at that level. So what's the difference between being an owner operator, right? The mindset, the literal work of an owner operator versus the mindset, the mind frame of being a shareholder. So being a shareholder by definition means that you have a stake in the business. Now you may be the only stakeholder, meaning that you're the only own owner, um, but the stakeholder position, the mindset is I influence, I have a vote on the direction of the company, how it's run and so forth but I don't necessarily get in there and do the work, do the actual, you know, I'm not the one out there in the field, you know, taking supplies and doing scheduling and managing people and so forth. So stakeholder means that you are truly an owner that influences the direction of the company and helps make major decisions and definitely directs culture and things like that. So we all at some point, hopefully all of you see that vision for yourself, even if you're still cleaning, that there is a, an opportunity for you to, to grow and to develop into a true shareholder position. And that, what does that mean? That means freedom. Mm. Think of shareholder as equal, like imagine in your mind, the word shareholder, and then put the equal sign. And then on the other side, freedom. That's what it means. Time freedom, money freedom. And now you can truly scale this business because you're not the single point of failure in your business. When you're an owner operator too often, we, we unintentionally do this. We create so many jobs for ourselves mm. inside the business that there's no way for us to grow or scale at that point because there's no more you to go around. So in a nutshell, Lindsay, that's the difference between being an owner operator, right? The mind frame of owner operator versus shareholder. That reminds me when I was trying to picture the difference in my head, Tracy, when you said shareholder, it sounded kind of like, Ooh, that sounds like important and kind of scary. But then <laughs> I was thinking of like a person like Jeff Bezos. Well, he is, I think he's like out of Amazon now, but whatever. We all know he was the big guy, the CEO at Amazon and he wasn't managing like 
you know, the logistics, he wasn't managing, like hiring his employees, like of the whole, he worked his way up and he became basically the biggest shareholder. Right. So he doesn't have to worry about the day-to-day stuff. And imagine the freedom that guy has. I mean, exactly. And it's all about leverage. It's all about, and so leverage, it's really about leverage, about, um, the ability to, and this is going to kind of roll right into the next topic that one of the, the trademarks, if you will, the hallmarks of the owner operator mindset inside the business is the mantra is like, how do we become more productive? Productivity, interestingly enough, the, the whole concept of productivity is how do we do more to get more? How do we do more with the same amount of time and get more? So do more to get more. That is just think about that productivity, do more to get more. more. To get more. I want to introduce a different concept to you that goes along with shareholder. So shareholders are looking for efficiency, efficiency versus productivity. Well, what does that mean? So think about how, it, let, let's use an example of mm-hmm. um, machines that have created efficiencies in our life. So once upon a time, none of us had a, well, not, nobody here probably, but once upon a time, <laughs> our, our ancestors uh, <laughs> um, didn't have dishwashers, didn't have a physical, like a, an actual machine that washed dishes. So what did they do? They were the dishwasher. Was mm-hmm. that efficient? No, right? There's only so many dishes a human being can wash physically on their own, right? There's only so much you can do. That's productivity. Like productivity says, let's do more dishes in the same amount of time. Efficiency says, hold on, let's create a machine (laughs) that does the dishwashing for us. So the human being is now freed up to do something else. So a shareholder is looking for efficiency over productivity Mm. to do less, do less and get more output. You see the shift? And not and not necessarily losing any quality of the output. Right. Either, I would exactly. Okay. Sometimes it's actually better quality, right? Higher quality, higher output with less work, less energy. And I'm not just talking about your own, but that's where it starts. So owner operator says, oh, okay, we need to do more to get more, to grow more. So who's going to do more? Me. I'm the owner. So I'm going to dive in. I'm going to spend more time. I'm going to put in more hours. You see, see that mindset. And that's what creates the trap, the productivity trap, the owner operator trap. And this is why so many of you right out there are going, Oh, and why can't I seem to get out of this? Why can't I spend less time? It seems like the more I grow my company, my business, the more work I'm doing. Ugh. And you can't scale is what I was going to say. There's no, no way to scale that. Yeah. Right. In fact, you can't even grow anymore. There's mm. a limit to your growth when your go-to mindset is if we want more, we have to do more. I have to do more. I have to put more time in. I have to put more effort in. I have to, right? That's the productivity owner operator mindset. So Clean Nation, where you are right now, think about your business. What's an area of your business right now? Identify one thing that if you were able to streamline, simplify this to make it more efficient, and you do less work, what would it be? Would it be hiring more cleaners? Would it be getting out of scheduling and having somebody else do it? What, what's the one area of your business? Maybe it's in acquiring new clients. Maybe right now it just takes way too much effort um, to get new clients. You don't have any kind of marketing in place. You don't have any, any automation for that. You, everything is manual. I don't know, but Mm. think about where you are right now and how that's keeping your business stuck at the level you're at now. 
And I want you to imagine that one place. Now, what do we do once we go? All right, I've got my, I've got that one place, but I've tried, I've tried to get out of this. What, what's the, how do I get out? The very first thing is you need to create systems, systems that aren't in place. And I guarantee you, wherever you show us, for example, you're talking to one of us on the team, show us an area where you're, you feel stuck, you can guarantee there's a lack of a streamlined system in it. Mm. So, Lindsay, can you think of maybe some examples that we've heard um, and had our people come to us and say, I'm so frustrated. This is an area of our business that we can't seem to get out of. Oh, yeah. I mean, a huge one is, um, well, you mentioned getting new clients, but of course, getting new um, employees is really hard for a lot of people. And it, and uh, when someone's just in the owner operator mindset, they are involved in every aspect possible of the hiring uh, process. And it really just slows them down. They don't have, you know, they're doing so much in the business. They can't really handle hiring people and adding that onto their plate because it's like they're juggling. So ironic, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's an, I, it's a catch 22. Mm. So you're absolutely right. I love that one. I want to grow my business, but I, I, and I know I need to hire people. I know I need to hire more cleaners. I really need to have somebody more in a supervisor role or somebody to take charge of these things like putting out fires. I really need somebody to hire someone to do the scheduling. I need a virtual assistant. There's all kinds of places they they know they're not being efficient, but they're in that catch 22 of, I know I need to hire, but I'm so busy Mm -hmm. in the business. I can't get out. I I can't seem to even figure out how to find the time and to hire these people efficiently. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that has to do with, I don't even know how to delegate. I don't even know, let's say I hire this person, like, I don't know how to give them work and train them and do all of that. So all of that points to mindset first. I know it doesn't seem like it, Clean mm-hmm. Nation, but the mindset of and the identity that keeps you trapped is, if it's going to be, it has to be me. That's the mantra of the owner operator. And I get it. That's what got you where you are today, but it's not going to get you where you're going. Okay. So you have to decide this is a cycle. I must break no matter what I need to start identifying myself as a true owner, a stakeholder, right? Who's there to create efficiencies, not to do more jobs myself, right? You're there to create jobs, not to do jobs. Okay. Oh, that's a writer downer, right? Mike would say. Like, that. That's a stakeholder that writes it right there. I'm here to create jobs, not to do more jobs. Okay. That's your mantra now. Yeah. yeah right. The, yeah. Write that down. Tell yourself that every day. How am I creating jobs? Okay. So that's mindset first. You have to decide. The truth is, is there ever going to be spare time for you to hire? No. You're going to have to make that time. You have to make it a priority. You have to say, you know what? I am ready. I need a system for hiring. I need a funnel. This is what Mike talks about all the time. We teach this inside our clean profit method is how to have a streamlined, systemized hiring funnel. And when you do that now, like just deciding, okay, I'm going to do that. That's the system I need. And I will do whatever it takes. I will take the time. I will make the time, right? Instead Mm -hmm. of putting out fires constantly, I will create that system. So that's a great example of a first a mindset shift and then tactical change. You have to change what you're doing. And if you're, if you're there thinking, okay, well, that's great. <laughs> but I don't, great. I don't know how to create a system like that, or I don't know how to create my automated um, a paid marketing funnel, or I don't know how to train or have somebody come in and do my scheduling, then get help. That's your next 
decision as a stakeholder? Do you think that Jeff Bezos or, uh, <laughs> you know, Elon Musk or whatever went, well, I don't know how to do that. I guess I'm done. Of course not, <laughs> right? We're like, Definitely no, not. they invested time, money, like there to find help, to find someone who knows how. So if you don't have someone in your world, in your life, in your business, that is, can guide you, that can compress time, like a stakeholder, right? How do you compress time? How do you do less and get more? You find someone who's done it before you, somebody who can show you, somebody who can, again, you're either going to invest a ton of time and spin your wheels and probably stay stuck way longer than you should, right? Losing sanity, money, all the things that go along with that, beating your head against the wall, which is very painful, uh, <laughs> trying to do it yourself, which you can do, or you can invest in yourself and the business now for yourself by finding a mentor and finding someone who can help you. And listen, maybe I'm biased because I'm a coach and I, I see the value. I have have my own coaches for me, for myself. And I believe in this model, this mentorship model. And I, I'm going to just shamelessly say, find someone, find a mentor. Now that's obviously what we do. And, and Lindsay, what are some of the ways maybe that if they, if clean nations out there, like, okay, I'm done, done being that running myself ragged owner operator. I'm tired of trying to, you know, fix this on my own and beat my head against the wall. What are some of the ways that we could support them? Yeah. So first of all, at growmycleaningcompany.com, we have the five shifts that will change your cleaning business that some of them are mindset shifts. <laughs> Definitely. Actually, I mean, everything's a mindset shift. Let's be That's honest. true. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts up here, right? Yes. So if you go, if you're, if you're new to cleaning nation or you keep hearing us talk about these five shifts and you're like, okay, it's time to take action. I can't stay like this anymore. That's a great place to start. Step one. Um, if you've been in cleaning nation for a little bit and you're like, Hey, I've heard this. I've seen the workshop. I really want to take action. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk mm -hmm. and get on the phone with us. Talk to one of our coaches, maybe even Mike, if you're lucky, he's doing some calls right now. So, Hey, I would go for that right now <laughs> as of what is this? September, 2022. I know he's on the phone. So check it out. And third, I, mean, I got a lot today, Tracy. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> third, <laughs> third, if you have actually been one of our clients and you've gone through the program and you're stuck again, and hopefully you're not cleaning, but you might be that owner operator mindset that we just talked about today. And you're still yes. having problems scaling. Um, the best way I'm going to say this, I'm going to put you on the spot, Tracy. <laughs> You're going to email Tracy. If you're an alumni yeah. and you're, this is hitting home, T-R-A-C-E-Y at growmycleaningcompany.com. That is what I've got, Cleaning Nation. Um, Tracy, anything else to close us out today? All I'll say about this, uh, Clean Nation, is listen, you are the one who's going to change your company, who's going to grow, who's going to scale. You're the one who's responsible. Listen, if you wanted a J-O-B, you would have a J-O-B. You didn't choose that for yourself. So this is your moment. This is your time. I'm going to call you to action, some action today. Do something different today. Don't just let this be something that you listen to and go, oh, that's interesting. That's cool. That's, that's a great idea. Okay, you're the owner. Be the owner. Take an action right now. That's it. Couldn't say it any better. That's all we got today, Cleaning Nation. I'm Lindsay, and this is Tracy, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text. It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 
602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.